These are stones on the land where my father grew up at Hanging Rock, West Virginia. This was the land of my grandparents, David and Rachel Wetzel. Hi, I'm Lucille Wetzel Pope. Today is January 23rd, 2010. I wanted to tell you a little about the siblings of my father, Mac, and also my brothers and sisters and their families and share a few pictures. Now we're up to Mac, William McCauley, my dad. Since all of us know one another, it seems pointless to say anymore, but 75 years from now, practically no one will remember us. So we'll give you some pictures and stories here of Mac's children. Mac married Otilla Heishman on August 4th, 1901. Their first child was Myrtle, who was born on Sunday, June the 1st, 1902. Myrtle was nine months old when my parents moved to Virginia. She was a hard-working woman. She worked in the fields like a man. Dora had a daughter, Eunice, to her first marriage, and we were the best of friends. She and I shared a lot of good times. We loved the weekends that we spent with Uncle Lee and Aunt Lillian. What a great period of time in our lives. Special thanks to Eunice and her son, who provided some of these pictures. Thank you. Otilla Catherine, my mom, we've already done this. So here's a little story about Otilla you might enjoy. When my mother was just a little girl, seven or eight years old, she went to visit her grandmother who lived close by in the same woods. And she was walking home late one afternoon. She heard a slight noise. She found a black panther coming up behind her. Fortunately, she was close to home. My grandfather, knowing it was time for her to be arriving, was waiting at the door. When he saw what was happening, he grabbed his gun, which was always kept right inside that door, and he shot the panther. Some people say that black panthers do not exist in that area, but they're wrong. This was near Lost City, Lost River, West Virginia. Now we start our tour of homes or general areas where our family lived. Traveling on the back road in the direction of north to south, after passing the Feller Place, which everyone in this area is familiar with, and going halfway up the hill, we see an enclosure over a well. Directly across the road to the left was my Aunt Mary's house. And where this gate is was a narrow road that went past my Grandma Wetzel's house. The top of the hill was a church, Mount Solon United Brethren. We went there on Sunday afternoons, and it was at that church one Sunday Herman, my dear nephew, with a smile two miles wide, told the minister that I could play the organ during the absence of the regular organist. I wanted to kill him. Well, I blundered through it. They had to sing what I could play. It was a very limited selection. Big joke, he thought. He laughed through the whole service. God rest your soul, Herman. Lee lived at home with our parents for long stretches of time before wandering off. Our house had a screened-in porch along the long side. On September the 14th, 1947, Sunday evening, we sat on that porch talking. My father and whichever of his sons were at home at the time took care of Keller's Cemetery, mowing, cleaning, and so forth and from that porch you could see just a corner of the area of the cemetery. 
Looking in that direction, Lee, who was going to help my father clean the cemetery for fall that coming week, said, Well, next week, if I'm still living, I guess I'll be over there, gesturing toward the cemetery. After just a moment, he smiled, his pretty smile, and he said, I guess I'll be over there even if I'm not living. On Monday, September the 15th, he was doing farm work along the Shenandoah River. At the end of the day, they rode the horses home, leaving the equipment in the field to use again the next day. The horse bucked and apparently caught Lee's foot in the saddle. He was dragged several miles to the home of the man he was working for. He died after midnight, making his death September the 16th. Now for an ironic story. Several nights before that, I had a dream. I thought that my mother and I were each riding horses in a cornfield along the river. We talked as we rode and we saw that the huge field had been half finished, leaving half a field of real big corn to cut. In the middle of the field, one stalk was a little higher than the others, and it, it had bent over, and the edge of it, the part with the silk, was touching the ground. Mom and I talked about that stalk of corn as we rode, and the irony here is that, first of all, we never rode horses. Lee was cutting corn in a field perfectly matched to the one in my dream. They had finished cutting exactly half of the field that day. When Lee was found entangled on the horse, his body was hanging from the horse with his head dragging on the ground. That's the exact picture of the stalk bent over, touching the ground. Now, that wraps it up. I hope you have learned something today. I would hate to think that I wasted my breath trying to make you guys as smart as me. And I hope you young people will carry on the family history. It has been a challenge, but I have loved it. I love all of you. Thank you, and God bless.